I want to ask you a weird question. Are microplastics actually bad for us? I know that sounds crazy. That sounds like asking whether or not cigarettes are bad for us, or whether or not FaceTiming in public without headphones is bad for everybody. Yes, of course those things are bad, and equally so. But for microplastics, they're in kind of a weird spot, a sort of scientific publishing purgatory that makes answering this question more complicated than you think. So after today's discussion, I want to make two things very clear. First, the scope and scale of the microplastic menace, and two, the very real difference between how we want science to be done and how it actually is done. Like the difference between how you want to look and how you actually Yes, Aria, thank you for pointing that out. You could have use a more charitable comparison. <laughs> okay, science time! Now entering the facility. First, the problem with plastic. Plastic is arguably one of the most amazing and useful materials ever created on Earth, but as such, we've made a whole heck of a lot of it, like over nine trillion kilograms of the stuff. That's more than all humans weigh. And unlike more natural materials like wood or something else organic, plastic doesn't really break down over time. It just gets smaller and enters the environment. Sadly, it won't surprise you that the vast majority of all this plastic is never recycled. So where is it all going? Well, gestures broadly. Plastic pollution has been described as one of the biggest environmental challenges of the 21st century. Billions of tons of plastic have entered the environment, and though they don't break down on any reasonable time scale like organic material does, plastic does crack, split, and splinter into smaller and smaller pieces until it gets small enough to be officially called micro or even nano plastics. Researchers often shorten this to MPs. Microplastics were first identified in the 1970s, after expeditions found the indestructible particles floating atop the Atlantic Ocean. Since then, microplastic concern has led to an explosion of scientific interest. Or rather, research couldn't help but explode after we realized that microplastics are in everything now. They are in so many things, they are like the Pedro Pascal of pollution. Microplastics have been found on Mount Everest. They have been found at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. They are floating in the air, buried in the soil, inside the fish that we eat, inside the water that we drink, in the new Fantastic Four movie, wait, that's Pedro Pascal again. With this disturbing distribution, it was inevitable then that we'd start finding plastic inside us. At least a dozen plastic-containing tissues have been identified so far, and we're finding them in more and more sensitive areas uh, every day. Through inhalation and ingestion, it's estimated that the average human person incorporates between 74 and 121,000 microplastic particles a year. The majority of those particles actually come from cosmetic products, like toothpaste and exfoliating scrubbers. This is why you don't need your fancy face wash, Aria. Uh, I don't even have a face. Well then, who keeps buying all the- Kevin? Kevin, are you using my credit card again? I told you it was only for V-Bucks. I don't care how smooth your skin is now. Your skin's not even real hum- I- You- You don't need it. Dang synthetic children and their lust for V-Bucks. It's reasonable to assume that maybe hundreds of thousands of tiny plastic bits entering your blood, brain, and other stuff each year is not good. But then why do the very same studies that point this out also make a note of saying we do not have enough evidence to clearly link negative health effects and microplastics. Well, that's because doing their due diligence, like all scientists should, there's a difference between science in theory and science in practice. Just like how a cool electric car in theory can be better than- Exactly, Aria. The Cybertruck problem, as you see, pictured one of them right there. Good comparison. Today's video is sponsored by Trainwell. Gamers. I'm award-winning science educator and increasingly wide, Kyle Hill. You know, earlier this year, I decided to get serious about getting healthier and getting stronger. And for the last 212 days in a row, I've been trusting my training to one service and one service alone. Today's sponsor, Trainwell. 
Formerly known as Copilot, but the name was changed to differentiate itself from AI chatbot Copilot services, TrainWell is a personal fitness service that combines the personalization and accountability of a human expert with the flexibility of technology. Your virtual coach customizes guided workouts to your goals, available equipment, schedule, and injuries. Every program is tailored to you and continuously adapted. With TrainWell, your workout is anytime, anywhere. And they're not paying me to say this last part, it's better than any gym membership I've ever had. My personal coach, Rod, adjusts my workout after every session, is always available via chat in the app, and keeps me consistent. I've been working out with TrainWell now three times a week for the last 30 weeks in a row. I've put on over an inch on my biceps. I no longer skip leg day. I can honestly say that this is maybe the strongest I felt in my entire life, and I've told every friend and family member I can about TrainWell, and a lot of them are using it now too. The first 100 people to sign up using my TrainWell link right here get 14 days free and $25 off their first month. If you want more encouragement, my Aria, you know, my AI, she's a danged personal trainer and bodybuilder, and even she uses TrainWell and swears by it. Look, everyone can train, but not everyone knows how to train well. <laughs> That's train well. Elongate yourself along the x-axis. You can touch plastic. You can store food in it. You can use it any number of ways medically. So it isn't crazy to ask, are microplastics actually bad for human health? And if so, why? Well, the answer to the latter is that tiny pieces of plastic do seem to have the unique potential to be dangerous. The mechanisms aren't yet fully understood, but it appears that microplastics have a unique ability to translocate inside the body. That is, they don't necessarily stay in the part of the body that inhaled or ingested them. For example, plastic pieces evading the mucous membrane in your gut and then making it into the surrounding tissue or your bloodstream. This appears to be a consequence of microplastics' small size, irregular shape, electric charge, high surface area, and resistance to degradation. Studies also point out that the high surface area and irregular shapes are the perfect vehicles for pollutants, pathogens, and other toxins which get into those little nooks and crannies, which make microplastics, ev <coughs> which make microplastics even more of a problem. <coughs> oh, oh that, <coughs> that's, <coughs> that's gotta be more than average. So we think that microplastics could be harmful, but are they? It's a valid question. Scientists have identified potential health effects in at least nine systems in the body, ranging from inflation all the way to affecting child development. How can little plastic pieces affect so much of us? Once microplastics translocate via a mechanism like the body trying to engulf and dispose of the macroscopic particles, or just by simple membrane damage, the foreign bodies can trigger your immune system, cause cells that encounter them to straight up die, and otherwise create enough non-degradable microscopic chaos that potential health effects related to oxidative stress and cell viability and general toxicity all start to stack up. I say potential health effects because again, these same studies also say that we do not actually have enough evidence to clearly link these potential effects to real humans living in the real world. And that's because they are based on a number of animal models and experiments with cells and organoids, not epidemiological studies with living humans. If we want a clear link between microplastics and health effects in people, more science is what we need. And science is hard. <coughs> Oh, oh, that was a big one too, oh no. Though scientists seem unified behind the idea that the link between negative health effects and microplastics is sufficiently persuasive, we don't yet have unified methods for definitively answering this hypothesis. We don't have standardized size of particles, or shape, or chemical composition. We don't have standardized animal models. We don't have standardized measurement and sampling methods. In short, there are a lot of studies now out there saying a lot of similar things but they can't all be compared exactly. So to take everything out of the theoretical, we need more standardized ways of doing this science and more epidemiological studies in real people. So what would a real link between microplastics and health effects actually look like? Hey, 
That's that Kevin that took my credit card. You get back here, synthetic young man! I can take it from here. To really link microplastics to negative health effects, what we would need first are standards and controls instituted the world over, and then we would need many pro and retrospective epidemiological studies. These studies would need to find populations of people with some known concentration of microplastics in certain parts of their body, and then compare them to a population with a different or no concentration. If there was a statistically significant difference in the health of these populations, controlling for everything else, then it would be good evidence of microplastics toxicity, especially if it was backed up by mechanistic explanations. It would be the same as comparing smokers to non-smokers over a number of years and finding statistically significant differences in their rates of lung cancer, supported by the known carcinogenicity of cigarette smoke. Once we have that for microplastics, then we can work on regulations that can make a difference. For example, if we found that microplastics of a certain size and composition were the most harmful, we could work with the largest producer of those specific plastics to reduce pollution. Okay, I'm back. To really establish a hard link between microplastics and negative health effects... Um, it... I already said all that. Oh. You went through all, like, the population stuff? I and... already said all that. Um, Okay, okay, well, in addition to that epidemiology, we also need just more microplastic awareness, and we need uh, maybe like a reduce, reuse, recycle campaign for the new age of plastic. Like reduce, reuse, recycle, repair, rethink, regift, uh, repair. Uh, other R words that the studies suggest. Did you really go through all of that without me? That was kind of like a whole. Okay. Until next time! <coughs> now exiting the facility. Thanks again to Trainwell for sponsoring today's episode. Remember, the first 100 people to sign up using my link right here get 14 days of personal fitness free and $25 off their first month. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky blonde wig, if you want to join our private Discord, if you want private members only live streams with me, go to the link on the screen and join today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on every single video. You can see there's hundreds and hundreds of you that have already done this as well. Another thing that, uh, you have to think about with microplastics is that they don't just go into the environment and wait for you to ingest or inhale them. They also bioaccumulate. So as they go into the food chain, the smaller things get eaten by the higher up things on the food chain, which get higher up and higher up and higher up. And because these things are not excreted, the microplastics stay in tissues, they tend to bioaccumulate. So by the time we start to eat some of these animals that are higher up in the food chain, like tuna, for example, then they have a higher concentration of these microplastics that make it into our body. The same reason why tuna is high in mercury content. So it's not just moving through our bodies and our sensitive bits, it's also moving its way all the way through the food chain. So how do we get it out of there? I don't know. Making a lot of kind of doom and gloom videos lately, huh? How you feeling? Let's do something about it. <laughs>